Hello, you guys. This is Evangelist Yonder. Bet yet you can just call me Yonder. I just wanted to hop on here right quick to give you guys a very, very informative video. I like to start by saying thank you so much for, for coming on my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, you guys, if you see me glancing over to the side, just know that I have my computer with me. I am going to give you guys some examples of practicing witchcraft, okay? So the title says some of you are practicing witchcraft and you don't even know it. So I hope and pray that you guys will receive this in love. All right. So let's get straight to it. How many of you know that praying to God in anger about your enemies is practicing witchcraft? You are not supposed to go to God in anger pertaining to your enemies, asking God to vindicate for you or to harm your enemies in a bad way. No, never, ever do this. When you are to go in prayer pertaining to your enemies, have a forgiving heart and hand them over to God. God. God has never lost the battle, okay? He knows when someone has hurt you, when someone has betrayed you, when somebody has lied on you, or whenever someone has caused harm to you, okay? But please, if you guys have ever been angry while being in prayer, please, 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 I'm asking you to go and repent because you're actually practicing witchcraft and those prayers of anger and unforgiveness can backfire on you and your bloodline, okay? So we have to be careful on our posture of prayer when we're going to God pertaining to our enemies or anything that's going on in our lives, okay? You have to be very, very careful about things like that, okay? Now, what I'm going to say is I know sometimes that it's hard that people will do things to us and we our first thing is we get upset. But I'm telling you, it's best to forgive first. That's the thing that you're supposed to do anyway. And although there are some warfare prayers that we as people of God can use pertaining to our enemies, but however, this is the thing about that. You have to be living a clean, holy, and acceptable lifestyle in the eyesight of God to where you can use those warfare prayers. I don't want you guys to do anything that's going to cause you some harm and that will hurt you or get you into a lot of trouble. That's not what I want you to do, okay? So just know that, know your posture in prayer. Never go to God angry, okay? All right, so my example number two is be careful when you're asking God for things. And this is an example. Like when you're going to God and you're asking God to bless you with a job due to financial gain. And that I've even heard a person tell me before, I asked God for this job that I've been wanting even if he has to remove somebody. That's, that's, that's not of God. Why would you want God to remove someone from their post so that you can be there. And who told you that that, got, that job was even for you? We have to learn how to pray when we go to God. If anything, you should say, Father God, if it's in your will that I go to that job, please make room for me to be there so that I can expand and grow and reap a good harvest financially. You guys, you got to know that praying these prayers of new opportunity and kicking someone out of their post, that's not of God. Because what if you go on that job? What if somebody is removed and you're placed there and you go on that, go on that job and that job is causing more heartache than, than, than celebration? We got to know better in, how, in, 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 in our prayers and what we're saying. Now, my next example is, please, 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 y'all stop praying for an in particular person that you think should be in your life. Like if there's someone that you like or someone that you're interested in, especially if these people are already in relationships or if they're married, please stop going to God and asking God to bring them to you. Because who told you that that was the person that God has for you to be in your life? You're projecting people to be in your lives and you have not 
not gotten permission from God and they could be in a relationship. And it's like when you bring people in your life that's not supposed to be in your life, it can cause a lot of turmoil. Therefore, be careful when you're asking God to bring people in your life because you might get that then some. OK, you are supposed to pray, Father God in heaven. I'm praying for my husband or I'm praying for my future wife and whomever, Lord, that you have that's supposed to be in ordained in my life. Please bring them in my life so that we can get married, that you will get the glory out of our marriage. OK, we have to be proper and we have to be careful on the things that 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 we're praying and the things that we're saying, because sometimes the things that we're saying has absolutely positively nothing to do with God and God is not in it. However, if you ask, thou shalt receive and you have to be careful, people of God, with what you're asking people for asking God for. OK, this next thing, which I know I might get some type of backlash from it, but I got to speak it. This universal new age uh, God perspective of you're going to put everything in the universe and you're going to manifest the life that you want. Let me tell you, that is witchcraft. You're depending on the earthly world and people in the world or your own free on your own free will yourself. You're depending on yourself to do everything for you, whether it's healing, whether it's breakthroughs, open doors. You guys, come on. This universal God thing, this is not of God. This is of the enemy. This is this is a concept from the dark world. Like, who really goes before the universe and asks the universe to bring them things unless it's people that's not in tune with God? And you also have people that call themselves to be Christians that practice this, this manifestation concept of putting things into the universe and that's backwards that's not of god if you're going to manifest it needs to have jesus christ all in it that he's going to get the glory for whatever it is that he does or bring in your life you should not be manifesting under a, a universal god perspective that's not of god it's really not and I'm sorry some of you may not understand or some of you may get mad but it's the truth jesus is jesus and that's it OK, now I want to talk about this burning sage, which is burn sage. Yep, I said it, which is burn sage. You are not supposed to be burning sage. And the whole concept is, is to, you know, clear your house of of uh, bad energy or spirits or clear your mind. You don't need sage to clear your mind. You do not. And actually, when you're burning sage, you're actually summoning spirits and different things from the dark world. You're opening up different portals. You shouldn't do that. You're practicing witchcraft. And let's go to the next one. Crystals. When you have these crystals and you're using them to uh, bring you good luck or to protect you from the enemy or you're using them as a healing uh perspective you know to put in your bath or or to put underneath your pillow for good luck that's witchcraft that's witchcraft and you shouldn't be doing it okay and i know a lot of people out there are so i'm bringing some good information that you should know about that you should be alert about that you should hey if you're doing any of this stuff please repent and ask god to forgive you Okay, so now we're going to move into sororities and fraternities. If you've ever pledged for a sorority or fraternity, you basically signed a blood contract over with the dark world. They really do rituals. They do sex rituals. They do spells. They go to the graveyard and they do different things that they shouldn't be doing. You know, they, they do a lot of chanting. They do a lot of hazing. There are so many children at college universities that have been killed through hazing. That's not God. And I could go deeper into the sororities and fraternities, but for time's sake, I'm just using it as an example. If you want me to go deeper about that, I will bring a more thorough part two about sororities and fraternities. I'm just on here basically giving you examples of witchcraft at this point in time. Okay, so we're going to go down to the, uh, the next one, and that's going to be uh, my last one, which is refusing the call of God. Now, we all know um, about Jonah. 
and how God had told Jonah to go and do something very, very important by going to go preach the word of God and giving warnings. And Jonah didn't want to do that. Jonah fled. Jonah was being rebellious. Okay. And a witchcraft is a form of rebellion. Okay, when you're refusing to listen to the word of God, when you're refusing to take the call of God, for whatever reason, you are being rebellious. And a lot of people have had the spirit of Jonah where you want to run away from God, where you don't want to answer to him, where you want to be rebellion and just do your own free will, do your own thing. God will, in fact, turn you over to yourself. But just know that if he does, you're acting in rebellion. Okay, so those were just a few examples of how some people are practicing witchcraft. Um, I knew I kind of like flew through those examples. However, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, about the examples that I have found. Okay, if you like the video, please let me know. I'll go into more de detail, but for time's sake, I just wanted to give you guys the examples. I thank you all so very much, and I'm so grateful for you guys tuning in. Please, 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 please like and comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. I give God the glory and the honor for each of you that's tuning in to me every time I drop a video. I love you all with the love of God. To God be the glory. Good evening.